if you own a cat, you know that they can be picky with their food. Trying to transition them to a new type of food or brand can be a challenge. Cats are imprint eaters, and they develop from a young age a strong preference for taste, temperature, and texture of that food for the rest of their life. So today, I'm going to show you how to transition your cat to a raw meat diet. I am the cat butler, and my two ragdoll cats, Timo and Arya, have been on a raw meat diet since when they were little. I also had trouble transitioning them to a raw meat diet at first, but over time, I was able to figure out some key tips that I'll share today. For people not familiar with the raw meat diet, I will quickly highlight the benefits. Cats are carnivores, and their digestive systems have evolved to specifically handle a meat-based diet. A raw meat diet will keep your cat at a healthy weight, reduce poop smell and poop volume. Doesn't smell too bad, Timo and Arya. Better dental health. Better urinary health. A healthier coat, and increased energy. As you can see, there are a lot of benefits. Whereas. The problem with common commercial cat foods like kibble is that it contains carbohydrates that cats have trouble digesting, and most importantly, don't need. In addition, kibble is often linked to obesity, which increases the chances of diabetes. Plus, the lack of water in dry food is not good for bladder and kidney health. Cats don't drink a lot of water. And mostly rely on getting water from their food, so usually a wet food or a raw meat diet would be better for your cat's health. And if you're worried about bacteria, their digestive tract is short and acidic, so it gives little time for bacteria to proliferate and get them sick. Now you understand the nutritional benefits of a raw meat diet. In the next few minutes, I'll go through the steps you can do to transition your cat. To a raw meat diet, there are two types of paths you can take to transition your cat to a raw meat diet: kibble to raw, or kibble to wet food to raw. What path you take depends on your cat. If your cat is more picky, then the kibble to wet food to raw is the path you take. Kittens are generally more open to trying new food, so it's possible kibble to raw may work. For Timo and Arya, I had to go the kibble to wet food to raw route, even though they were kittens, as Arya was super picky. The key to transitioning your cat is patience. Some cats may take three seconds, others may take months. In this video, I will do kibble to wet food to raw, as the kibble to raw step is similar to the wet food to raw step. The first thing you need to do is to stop free feeding dry food. Instead, start feeding your cat two to three meals a day. Your cats will get a little hungry in between meals, versus being full all the time, and your cat. Will have more motivation to switch to a new diet. Leave it out for 30 minutes, and then put it away. This lets them know the food is not always there, and they have to eat it right away. Another benefit of feeding your cats several meals a day is that your cat associates food with you. They will associate you with positive feelings. This helps build a stronger bond with your cat. And helps with training your cat at a later time. This may be the hardest step because kibble is very addictive. Start by choosing a quality grain-free canned food. 
that is high in protein. I recommend these two brands. They are both packed with protein, grain free, and healthier than the other options on the market. The key to any successful transition is to do it gradually. You can start by having their meals be 25% wet food and 75% dry food. Have the foods be separate. When you see your cat eat the wet food, gradually increase the ratio till you feed them 100% wet food. If in the beginning you have a hard time getting them to eat the wet food, you can mix it with their dry food. And if that doesn't work, you may have to try a different brand. Also, like the dry food, you want to take the food away after 30 minutes. This is to reinforce the importance of mealtime and get them to eat immediately. Do make sure that your cat doesn't go too long without food, especially for cats that have a medical condition. On average, healthy cats can go 12 to 24 hours without eating. Lastly, when you transition your cat to a new diet, they may start to have diarrhea. This is normal as your cat is adjusting to its new diet. After your cat is comfortable with wet food, stay on that diet for one to two weeks. If you enjoyed this video so far, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. We make videos on helping you become the best cat owner. So please join us. Just like going from dry to wet food, we will gradually increase the ratio of wet to raw food. Starting with 25% raw and 75% wet food and eventually getting to 100% raw. For viewers that are unfamiliar with the raw meat diet, the diet is composed of muscle meat, bone, organ meat, and supplements like vitamin E or iodine. Supplements are added because the whole animal is not being used, such as the animal's head or feet. The raw meat diet aims to mimic what it is like for cats to eat whole prey. The first raw meat your cat should try is chicken. I recommend starting with chicken as it's less likely to cause your cat to have an upset stomach. So start by adding a few chicken pieces with your cat's wet food. I like to cut my cat's raw meat into chunks so they can use their jaw muscles, but you can grind the meat as well. Keep it separate and only mix them together if your cat is not eating it. If your cat eats all the chicken, you can now add other proteins like beef heart or pork loin. And if that goes well, you can start adding some bone and then organ meat. Raw edible bone provide essential calcium and help firm a cat's poop. Make sure to feed small bones safe for consumption and never cooked bones. Some small bones you can feed your cat include chicken necks or chicken wing tips. I use calcium MCHA, which is natural freeze-dried bovine bone from New Zealand and Australia. Instead of cooking the bone, like bone meal. In MCHA, the bone is freeze dried. Cooking the bones loses most of its nutrition, whereas freeze dried bone is almost identical to whole raw bone nutrition wise. This makes it one of the most complete and effective bone health supplements today. It is also high quality and helps me save time preparing for my cat's food. The number of capsules to give depends on the size of your cat, but a good rule of thumb is between a half and three fourth capsule per every ounce of meat. I will link the calcium MCHA in the description below. When you start feeding your cat organ meat, you may notice your cat having loose stools or even diarrhea. Organ meat is rich in nutrients which makes it very difficult to digest. Therefore, you should reduce the quantity of organ meat till your cat adjusts to it. You can feed your cat a little bit of fish once a week to get their omega-3s. Omega-3 is a type of fatty acid that helps your cat to have a healthy skin 
and a shiny coat. The overall improvement in health of the cat's hair follicles will help reduce shedding. Here are the fish you can safely feed raw to your cat. If you're having trouble getting your cat to eat the raw meat, you can add a food topper like this one here. I have found that most cats absolutely love it and get them to eat anything mixed with it. The food topper is made out of bonito flakes and it is high in protein and low in calories. Keep in mind that it's a treat and not a meal. Supplements to add once your cat is on a raw meat diet include iodine, vitamin E, and manganese. Iodine is needed to help support healthy thyroid function. A raw diet that does not include whole prey usually is deficient in iodine. To add iodine to your cat's diet, kelp is a good option because it has one of the highest concentrations of iodine found in food. To figure out how much kelp to add to your cat's diet, take your cat's weight and insert it into this formula to get their recommended daily allowance. Aria would roughly need 78 mcg per day. Vitamin E is another thing you need for your cat's nutrition. I use a vitamin E oil that is easier to use. You just need one vitamin E drop daily in your cat's food. Lastly, manganese can be sourced from green lip mussels. Usually, I give Aria between 1 to 2 scoops or 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams of green lip muscle. You can find a link to the supplements I use in description below. Many people have asked, what is this odd looking food bowl? It's a slow feeder bowl. A slow feeder helps stop your cat from eating too fast and throwing up. This one is also made out of porcelain, so it's good if your cat has feline acne. The common food bowl is made out of plastic. This can be scratched and become a breeding ground for bacteria. So I recommend going with a stainless steel or a porcelain option. I will link Timo and Aria's food bowls in the description below. I hope this video made transitioning your cat to a raw meat diet easier. The key is patience and you will eventually succeed. If you'd like to learn more about the raw meat diet in detail, I'll link the video in the description below. Comment down below, how do you raw feed your cat?